Good morning. Good morning, good morning, and welcome <laughs> to the Pink Poodle Television Network. My name is Carol Kardish, and I'm with the people. You want to know who the people are? Yes. Number one, Eric Frasca. Number two, Macaval, the devil. Not literally. Number three, our hunter, Frank Kremsner. And our final, and one of our finest young men, Matthew Melendez. He truly is a tennis star. Tennis star indeed. Behind number one, of course. Now, we are here to discuss many, many events currently happening and have happened in the 70s and 80s. This includes presidential affairs with Nixon and Ronald Reagan. Also, the gay right movement, new inventions, assassinations, and anything that you think is important of this time period. Yes, indeed. We are going to start off with a little bit of story about Nixon and what he has done. President Nixon. He resigns due to the Watergate scandal. Yes, he actually is the first president of the United States to leave office because of this. Yes, he got into serious trouble with his Watergate scandal, yet there was other stuff behind this that we did not know until recently. We found, yes, and discovered that he had multiple recording tapes of conversations and relationships he had with the true American people. Yes, and we thought all those tapes were actually turned into the federal government, except we found one tape. Yes, one tape and one tape only has been left behind. We actually found out that it originally came from the Pink Poodle Television Network. Yes, right here in this studio. We don't know how it got there, but it did. So for now, we're going to play this tape for you. By the way, parental is advised. Um, let me see what the president has down his pants. Oh, oh, oh my oh, goodness! Yeah. Oh my yeah, Frank. Frank. Oh, 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 Frank. oh, 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 that is one true videotape of President Nixon getting his message across to his people. This is Carol Kardish, and we will be back with more stories. Uh, my partner, good, uh, welcome back. And uh, my co-host, uh, Carol, actually had to relieve himself of some of his duties, if you know what I mean. Uh... He'll be back shortly, but I'm actually going to take over for a little bit now. And in other news, in foreign affairs, we have a huge, absolutely just drastic, just devastating event that occurred in uh, the Ukraine, actually. April 24th, 1986, uh, the Chernobyl power plant, the nuclear reactor, uh, reactor number four actually exploded. And uh, this is an absolutely devastating event in uh, our, really our, a world's history. Uh, although only 47 people were killed, the extreme radiation that was just given off, hundreds of thousands of people were misplaced, and these effects are really going to linger on for years to come now. It is uh, unknown at the moment the exact causings of this, but it was just the extreme heat and uh, the core of the reactor actually exploded. Now, some of the repercussions of this are Nuclear power pants are currently a pretty big deal, and uh, probably aren't going to be a big deal anymore. Now that is, uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, let's actually just keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, be greatly, uh, they, 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 they need it. They need us. We sometimes just let it be. You know, that's that's what we're all about here. The Vir Fidelii. 
That's what that's what we are as a world. And uh, that's that's probably one of the biggest things that's happened on the foreign level. But now, if we're taking it back domestically, we uh, have some tragic tragic news with uh, our president, Mr. Ronald Reagan. Uh, March 30th, 1981, Mr. Reagan and three of his co-workers, employees, were actually shot by a fucking crazy man. He was fucking crazy. Fucking mind fucking crazy. Now, Mr. Reagan did happen to recover. One of the four men was, uh, He's gone. He's gone because of that fucking crazy man. It's crazy shit. It's crazy shit like that. That's why, uh, that's why we have guns. That's all. That's why we have him. Frank Kremsner. He's got the nicest shotgun and the big North Silver. And, uh, it's, uh, Ronald Reagan, Mr. President, he did recover. And he's okay now. He is, uh, in office. Two of his men are okay, one of them gone because of that fucking crazy man. Now, uh, we're going to take a break for a little bit. My uh, co-host, Carol, is uh, he'll, be, he'll be back with us shortly. And uh, we're going to be talking about some Olympics, uh, some new advancements that are really going to blow your fucking head. And uh, we got some interviews. We're going to be taking this out of the studio. And uh, we're going to be getting down and dirty, if you know what I mean. So, uh, we'll be right back. Thank you. And now I am back. I hope my co-host, Mr. Number One, Eric Frasca, was uh, truly an honor to listen to. He's a great man. He is number one. Now we are here to discuss the true Olympic Games. The 1980s had some wonderful moments. First year in 1980, our underdog, the American USA hockey team, Head coach Herb Brooks, captain Mike Ruzioni. He led the team to victory. Victory, yes, winning gold, beating the undefeated Russian team by their head center Sokolov. He was truly one of the best centers in the world, and now our Jack Johnson beat him. I think it was Jack Johnson. Anyway, back to that. They beat everyone, coming back from losing every game. They were down from Sweden, down from Russia. All of them, they beat them. So that was truly, truly an American honor that everyone will always remember. Eight years later, in 1988, the Jamaica bobsled team won the bobsled tournament. Yes, they were the underdog. Why? Why were they the underdog? Because one and only, it's Jamaica. Jamaica has sprinters. Jamaica has long distance runners. Like, what are they doing in the winter? They don't, they don't have anything. They don't got snow. They got, they got shoes, and they got grass. They don't got snow. So they were the underdog. They were going to lose. What they do? They won. They beat them. They beat the Canadians. They beat the Russians. They beat all those northerners. Yes, yes, they did. So there you have it, folks. I am Carol Kardish. I am Carol Kardish. And we'll be back. We'll be back soon. In other news... Children are becoming sexier, and that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, wel welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, everyone. Welcome back to the Pink Poodle Television Network. Uh, I'm Eric. My co-host, Carol, is actually, we sent him out on a field assignment. Uh, Carol. Uh, he's actually, he's at the residency, the Hotel John Lennon, the famous artist from the Beatles, a singer, songwriter, uh, guitar player. Uh, Carol, are you, Carol, are you with us? Thank you, Eric. We are here, live. I am Carol Cordes of the Pink Poodle, Pink Poodle Television Network. As you can see, right here in this door, this is the one and only John Lennon. Yes, John Lennon, the famous artist, the famous musician, the phenomenal singer. And, oh, and here he is. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. There he is, going to his apartment. Oh my goodness, what, what a great man. As you can see, his, his wonderful... Oh, oh, my, oh my goodness! As you can see... The man is just shot. Just, just, 
What's wrong, Lord? What? what? Sir! <laughs> Sir! Sir, come back! <laughs> what are you doing? Sir! Looks like he's gotten away. He's gotten away. As you can see, <laughs> John Lennon has been shot. John Lennon is dead. <laughs> Eric, we're back to you in the studio. Okay, thank, thank you, Carol. Uh, now, on uh, our, next, uh, our next topic of conversation, we have the ad recent advancement in uh, boom boxes, style, swag, and uh, just what, what's in. And uh, I, I believe that we're back with Ca Carol made his way over to the Garden State Plaza, the mall, and I think he's going to go check out and maybe do some interviews and get to talk with the public about how they like the new boomboxes, sunglasses, and just the whole, the whole new look. Uh, Carol, you are, you're with us. Uh, yes, off to you, Carol. Yes, thank you, Eric. We are here live at the mall. Yes, we are here live at the mall at the Garden State Plaza only. We're here to discuss the new inventions of this time, including the new uh, sunglasses and including the new Sony box. Oh, the boombox is great. Down here we have a... Sir! Right here we have a, we have a new... The first one here, Google Maps. Oh my lord, this is fantastic. Sir! Yeah. Is this the new Boombox? Yeah, this, Sony? Is, this is the new Sony Boombox. Wow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great because what it is, is I can now come to the mall with my skates, with my mid caps, rocking my fresh shorts, my fresh tee. Listen to the music I want. Has this new boombox upped your style? Oh, that's cool. Wow. That's great. This is the best. This is, this is a Sony. Sony swag. Sony swag, as the, the man says. Do you, uh, can you show us some moves? I, I think I can. He's going to show us some moves. Welcome back, uh, uh, Car Carol. That was great. Actually, uh, Carol's back in the studio. Uh, Car uh, what do you think about I mean, that boombox? It's really something special. That's as I was interviewing that guy, I, oh, I had I got into it as you guys saw <laughs> yeah, on, I mean, on national television. I mean, I, I dance. I actually have my own Sony Walkman, but these boombox. I'm gonna. This doesn't play out. I mean, I could go to the mall and play my music. It's That's, truly incredible. Truly it really incredible. Is, but uh. We're actually, uh, we're <laughs> actually speaking of uh, trend-setting devices. This isn't so much a device, but uh, we're actually going to be heading out in the field once again for this movement. Uh, they call it the the Gay Pride Movement. Now, the uh, Gay Pride. Do, do you want to talk a little about this, or should, or should I? Uh, you just, you're doing a great job. All right. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Carol. Now, okay. So, uh, for those of you who are just a little, uh, not really completely. I don't have full knowledge of what gay pride is, you know. Some some people feel for some whatever reasons that man and man are it's acceptable. Now, these uh these people are uh starting a movement. They they may they want change. They want change and we've actually interviewed three normal Americans. <laughs> very, very very normal Americans exactly. that about their opinion on this. Exactly. You know, cuz the the only opinion that matters is yours. Your opinion. So uh, we're opinion actually, I believe we have some footage. Carol going out in the field. Uh, me going out in the field. Our uh, another one of our reporters, Matthew Melendez, the tennis prodigy. He actually took the time out of his tennis training schedule to go out in the field. And uh, actually, oh, well, the one and only Frank Kremsner, also I hear, might be out in the field doing some interviewing too. He found. Uh, a really a, a great man who is very opinionated on this topic. So uh, I, I believe we're going to start out with uh, 
I believe it's Matthew Matthew Melendez with uh, with an interview. That's it is Matt Matthew. Yes, it's Matthew. Matthew. Okay. Uh, so Matt, Matthew, Matt. we're we're off to you. Thank you, Eric and Carol. Um, we're here in the local community center with uh, what's your name? Uh, Joel. <laughs> Nice Joel to meet Peters. You. Nice to meet you, Josh. Nice um, to meet you. Now, there's a whole big movement coming. Gay rights. What, what is what is this? Are you for it? Against it? I've heard. I've heard. I've heard. Oh. <laughs> it's not my thing, Matthew. Um, oh. I personally, I think it's the grossest thing in the in, I've ever heard. But I, what, what's wrong with it? I mean, I if, if they feel that they can do what they want. They should be allowed to be with who they want. Don't oh, you agree? I grew up a Catholic man, and according to the church, <laughs> penis is meant for vagina. I mean, it's it's huh? just that simple and plain. I I, I don't understand why someone would want to do such a thing. Like this doesn't work. But how how do you feel? Like if it's not meant for each other, what do what do you feel? These people? How did, how did they come about? I have a son named Andrew. His best friend's gay. I I don't know how. He are, are you are you associate. afraid that he that he will turn out gay? No, um, you, you never know. But I have faith, like I said, in Christ. I have faith that he will he will pursue like me, and so he will be a man of the church. He will be a married man of the church. Yes, You're married to a woman, nice kids, perhaps. Well, um, it was nice talking to you, Joel. It was nice talking to you. Matthew. Um, back to Eric at the studio. Uh, thank you again, uh, Matt, and uh, it was very interesting. Now we're off to Frank Kremsner with a, another interview at the uh, community center. Frank? Thanks, Eric. Now we're here with Mr. Frank Epolito. Hello. How are you? So, uh, what's your opinion on gay rights? You know, uh, personally, I don't really care who's gay and who's not. I mean, I'm a married man. I have a child. I might be fat. People don't think I'm an attractive man, but, you know, I... That I've done, I've done it all. Anybody gay in your family and gay associations? Not that I'm aware of. I'm sure you want to check, never check your family background, maybe some way down in 1800s or something, that little something, something going on. Is that what you said? I mean, I don't have a time machine to go back in time. How, do, how, do, how am I supposed to know? Well, how does that make you feel inside? I mean, all these gay people in the world, you know, start going at it. Do I care about this? No. <laughs> well, folks, that's the Epolitos don't care. Here's your opinion from Mr. Epolito. I thank you very much. Thank you. Back to you. Back to you, Eric. Okay, Frank. Uh, thank you, Frank and Matt. I mean, those were two very, uh, very interesting uh, takes on the new gay rights movement. Now, uh, now that we're back in the studio, I'm actually sorry, my Co-host Carol got caught out in the field. He was going to do another uh, another interview for you, for the viewers. He he went out and he wanted to do it for you, but uh, when push came to shove, it uh, it really just didn't develop, and uh, it it wasn't it wasn't set for it wasn't very appropriate for the audience, and uh, we thought it would be the best to cut it out of this week's. Uh, Pink Poodle Television Network news report, but uh, just in review, I mean, a, a lot of, a lot of very interesting and very vital things happened throughout the 70s and 80s, and uh, I just, I just want to thank uh, my co-host Carol, who is not here right now, but our field reporters, uh, Matt Cavallo, Matt Melendez, Frank Kremsner, and uh, you know, they, they. Uh, there is no I in team. There is a me. But uh, that's not that's not what we're about at the Pink Poodle Television Network. We're a we're a family. We uh, we do it for Carol. That's what that's who we do it for. And uh, this this one's for you, Carol. So uh, from the uh, the bottom of my heart, uh, you stay classy, San Diego. I like poodles.